Okay, now the first thing that you gotta do if you wanna stop being lazy is watch this entire video. I know some of you guys got an attention span of like four seconds, but this is not for entertainment, this is to make your life better. So resist the urge to go like check Facebook compulsively or whatever it is that you wanna do and watch this full video because I promise you it will benefit you. Now you've probably heard a bunch of people who tell you things like you should grind and you should hustle and you should work harder and you should rise to the occasion and all this stuff that you should stop being lazy and you should just put your nose to the grindstone, you should just do it. And while I agree with all of those, um, I don't think they're very helpful. I mean, they might be helpful for a short term, but in the long term, they really don't do very much for you. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna actually go deep into the psychology of why people are lazy in the first place. I'm gonna help you figure out what's at the root of it, what's at the cause of it, so that you can address it directly and you can fight the cause rather than the symptoms so that you can have that motivation that you know that you want, that you know that you need, uh, that you can have that on a long-term basis instead of just having it for a few hours or for a day. Now, I've been able to find four different psychological sources of laziness, four uh, beliefs or fears that might cause you to be lazy. And so I'll tell you right away what those are. The first is that you don't believe that your work will pay off. Maybe you've done things in the past, you've put a lot of effort into something, and it didn't work out for you. Or maybe you were taught, uh, maybe your parents or your teachers uh, consciously or subconsciously taught you that you could do a lot of work, but it's just not going to work in the end. Like that Linkin Park song, I tried so hard, but in the end it didn't even matter, right? We're getting these kind of negative cultural programming from a lot of different angles. And so if you believe that, uh, that your work is not going to pay off, then obviously you're not going to be very inclined to do that work in the first place. So that might be a source of laziness. Another one is the fear of failure. It might not be that you don't believe that your work is going to pay off, but it might be that you're just not confident that it's going to pay off. And so you're envisioning all of these scenarios where you fail and you embarrass yourself. You waste a whole bunch of time. Maybe you're in a bad financial situation. You have these scenarios in your head where you've tried but it didn't work out and maybe maybe that reveals to you that you are not good enough. Not that working hard at something doesn't work, but working hard at something doesn't work for you because there's something wrong with you. And that's something that's very scary for a lot of people. So if you don't ever try, then you don't ever have to worry about failing at what you try to do. If you never tried, then you can't fail Therefore, never try, and then you'll, you'll preserve your pride. You don't have to worry about feeling like a failure. Although, of course, that's not really going to work out very well in the end, right? Because if you never do anything, then you probably are going to feel like a failure just by default. Even though technically you never failed at anything, uh, the fact that you never try to do anything makes you kind of a failure. So, so obviously that doesn't really work out very well as a long-term strategy, but in the short term, it might make you put off things until tomorrow because at least you can save yourself from feeling like a failure today. Another cause of laziness is that you're afraid to face discomfort. You're afraid to do work because work is not comfortable. And if that work comes with a dose of uncertainty, then that's even more uncomfortable. I want to share what I think is a really cool illustration of this from Myron Golden. Maybe he got it from somewhere else, I don't know, but I got it from him. Anyway, so it, it works like this. There's, there's two mountains, and then this is where you are. You're on the shorter mountain. This is called Mount Just Enough. On Mount Just Enough, you have just enough to meet all your needs, right? You, you're working your 40 hours, you're paying your bills, you have a roof over your head, you have food in your refrigerator, you're pretty satisfied. And then when you're not working, you spend all the rest of your time playing video games and watching Netflix. You're comfortable. You're comfortable sitting up here on top of Mount Just Enough, where you have just enough to meet all your needs. But then one day you decide to look up here and you see this bigger mountain. This is called Mount More Than Enough. And you think, well, that would be pretty cool if I could get to Mount More Than Enough. Because if I was on the top of Mount More Than Enough, for one thing, I'd be a lot happier in my life. I'd be a lot more satisfied. I'd have a lot nicer things for myself. 
And since I have more than enough, I could also contribute to the world around me. I could also help other people have better lives. So you think, okay, well, that'd be pretty nice to be on the top of Mount More Than Enough. But the problem is right here. This is called the Valley of Not Enough. And you might have noticed that in order to get to the top of Mount More Than Enough, you have to go to the depths of this Valley of Not Enough. So you have to face this discomfort. You have to face this uncertainty. You have to face this risk before you're gonna get to the point where you wanna go. You have to go down before you go up. And a lot of people uh, stay on Mount Just Enough for their entire lives because they're afraid to go down into the valley for a while. They're afraid of that discomfort. So if that's you, well, that's gonna make you lazy. If you were afraid to face the valley of not enough, that's going to dissuade you from doing anything to make your life better or doing anything to make anyone else's life better. It's going to keep you from doing the things that you know that you need to do. And the fact of the human nature that we are always meant to be advancing. We are always meant to be progressing. And when we do not progress, then we get depressed. So people will have this attitude that they're just fine here on top of Mount Just Enough. But the problem is that if they're stuck there, they're stagnating, they're not moving, then they're getting psychologically depressed because they realize that they're not meeting their potential. We are moving creatures and if we are not moving, then we are dying spiritually and we feel that through a thing called depression. And then to make matters worse, if you're on Mount Just Enough today, well, what was just enough today might not be enough tomorrow, right? This is something we see all the time that people rely, they, they uh, stake their entire lives on one corporate job and then they get laid off because the economy goes south or something like that. What happens to those people? Well, they're stuck, right? They have nothing to go back to. They thought they had just enough, but it turns out that just enough was not enough at all. Anyway, so that's a long-winded way to say that fear of discomfort keeps people lazy. Now, the last way I want to talk about is addiction. If you are addicted to heroin, for example, obviously you're going to be chasing your fix instead of doing whatever it is that you wanted that you should be doing in your life. But that's not that's not only relegated to hard drugs. The truth is that the vast majority of us are addicted to something that is keeping us back from our, our true potential. And oftentimes that addiction is actually a dopamine addiction. And the way that we get, which is a drug addiction, technically, because dopamine is a drug, but it's a drug that your brain produces. And if you're addicted to dopamine, then what that really means is that you're addicted to behaviors that produce dopamine. So for example, social media addiction. If you feel like you have to compulsively check your phone to see if anybody new posted on Facebook every 10 seconds, then you are addicted to dopamine. If you are incapable of pulling out a book and reading for an hour without checking your phone or without watching TV or without playing video games, you are addicted to dopamine. And if you're addicted to dopamine, then the addiction oftentimes is going to come first before whatever it is that you know that you have to do. And so the addiction makes you lazy. If you are addicted to constant stimulation, from whatever sources, from electronics or the worst offender, but whatever it is, if you're addicted to constant stimulation, then you're not going to be able to do the hard focused work that you know that you need to do in order to get anything done in life. Okay, now that you understand the reason for laziness, let's go into how to fix it. And this is gonna be based on the causes rather than just trying to patch over the symptoms and tell you to just grind through it and you know all that kind of generic advice that everybody else gives you. Now, if your problem is that you don't believe that your work will pay off, um, the solution to that is to, to put things into your subconscious mind that will counteract that programming. You got that programming either through teaching or through experience or through reading stories about people who failed. And the way the subconscious mind works is it just kind of regurgitates whatever it takes in. Whatever it takes in, it, it pushes back to you. It, it, whatever you see, that becomes your belief. And oftentimes that's misleading because what you see might not be a really good representative sample of reality. 
But if you understand that that's the way that it works, then you can manipulate the output by manipulating the input. So instead of learning this negative programming, which says that you're going to fail, start putting in examples of, of success. Start exposing yourself to success. And there's a bunch of ways to do that. My favorite way is just by reading books. Either you can read biographies of successful people. You can read about how they worked hard and their work paid off. Or you can just read nonfiction books about here's how to do this and here's how it pays off. Because this stuff makes sense, right? You read that, do X, Y, Z, and this will be your result. Um, if you read that, then it will start to seep into your subconscious mind and you'll recognize, oh, I can do that. I can put some effort into this and I will have success. Another thing you can do that's awesome is visualization. Visualize yourself succeeding. See, the subconscious mind doesn't really know the, the difference between something that's really happening and something that you are going over as a scenario in your head. So if you have a habit of visualizing yourself failing, your subconscious mind is picking that up and it thinks that it's true. It thinks that you've actually failed. So the tally on the failure column is getting higher and higher and higher in your subconscious ledger, so to speak. So in order to counteract that, you have to stop doing the negative visualization and start doing positive visualization. Visualize what it would look like if everything turned out right. Visualize what it will look like when all of your work pays off and your subconscious mind will start to recognize that as the reality of, of life rather than constant failure. And then on the same token, you wanna get rid of the negative inputs, right? And you get a lot of negative inputs through culture. You might have negative people in your life who tell you that you're gonna fail or who don't believe in you or don't believe in people in general. And if that's the case, then you should probably uh, cut down your exposure to those people, but also in media in television like there's a show that i think is very funny called it's always sunny in philadelphia um very funny show but the whole message like the, the the whole theme of the show is every single episode these people try to do something they try to start a business or they try to start some sort of event or they they try to do something and every single time they fail and the way they fail is kind of funny but on the other hand, it's just kind of programming you. It's giving you those examples over and over and over again. Here's a person who tried to, did something, to do something. Here's how it failed. And of course, it's fictional, right? None of this actually happened. But again, the subconscious mind doesn't understand the difference. You're just programming images of failure into your mind. And so if you're, if you're doing that through media, through TV, um, you want to be very intentional about what you watch, what you read, what you listen to. You want to get stories of people succeeding, not stories of people failing. Of course, there is something to be said about reading stories about people failing so that you can avoid the same pitfalls. But if you're at the point where you can't even motivate yourself to start, then there's no need to put that into your mind just yet. Get yourself to the point where you can have everyday motivation you know, every day in general, you might have some bad days, but if you can have a general sense of motivation, then you can start uh, focusing, then you can start looking at stories of people who have failed and figure out why they failed and how you can avoid it. But until that point, I highly recommend that you focus only on the positive, the success stories. And then of course you wanna avoid the news because the news is always negative. The news is talking about recessions and people getting killed and people losing their jobs and right, all this negative stuff uh, that's, that's not gonna do any good in your subconscious mind. So I recommend cutting out the news completely. And then also uh, social media seems to have a tendency of, of pushing negativity on you. That, um, and this obviously depends on who your friends are in social media, but negativity sells. The truth is that the social media algorithms, they want to maximize engagement. And so they push the, um, the things, the, the posts, the videos, etc., the pictures that, that get the most engagement. And it tends to be that the negative things get the most engagement because that's just kind of how our reticular activation system works. If there's a pot of gold to your right and a saber-toothed tiger to your left, you're gonna focus more on the saber-toothed tiger because that's the, the threat of the tiger is more immediate than the, the um, opportunity of the gold. So 
on social media, it, it tends to be kind of a cesspool of negativity and complaining. So I highly recommend that you limit social media consumption as much as you possibly can because that will get rid of a lot of the negative examples that are coming into your mind. Okay, so now if the big thing that's holding you back, the thing that's making you lazy is that you're afraid of failure and you have to be brutally honest with yourself here. You have to, you know, if you, if you meditate, it's, it's very helpful for kind of getting in touch with uh, what are your true motivations? And it's hard to admit that, that you're afraid of failure, right? It's hard to admit that you're afraid because being afraid is seen as weakness and, and it's hard to admit a weakness. So you have to be honest with yourself about this. But if you figure that out, that fear of failure is your problem, then chances are that the biggest thing that you need to do is to eliminate your pride. And this is something I've talked about before, and it's not an easy thing to do to eliminate your pride, but your pride is probably what's causing the problem, because if you're afraid to fail, probably the main reason for that is that you're afraid to be seen failing. You're afraid to be labeled as a failure. And so if that's the case, the problem is your pride. The problem is how you see yourself is rather fragile. And I won't go real deep into it here. I've talked about this in previous videos, but one of the most successful things uh, in, in my life, because I've had this problem big time, right? I've had a big ego, a very fragile ego. I've had a lot of pride. And so I was stifled, like I was afraid to do anything. I was afraid to express myself because that might hurt my pride. And so one of the biggest things that's helped me is just to consciously let go of my feeling of importance and recognize that when I, I do something to try to increase my own importance, then most of the time it ends up having the opposite effect. So if you can, if you can just let go of your own importance and recognize when you're doing something for the sake of your own importance and then stop doing it. If you can see yourself for what you really are, which is a, a piece of consciousness, a spiritual being created in the image of God, then you don't have to worry so much about whether or not you succeed or fail and what that says about you. You don't have to worry about what other people think about you because who you are is grounded in a deeper spiritual truth than anybody else's perception. And so if you can realize that whatever you do, whether you succeed or fail, well, first of all, that's only just a short-term result, right? Because you are an infinite being. And if you fail in the short term, you're still gonna succeed in the long term. The Bible says that all things work together for those who do good. If you are doing good, you are going to succeed. That's a promise. That's something we know is going to happen. And now that might not happen in the short term. You might, you might try to do something tomorrow, and then by the end of the day you say, oh, it didn't work. Um, well, you might have to try at it a little, a little longer than a day, right? Or maybe a little longer than a month, or maybe a little longer than a year. But eventually, you are assured that it's going to turn out for the best. So if you're afraid of failure, if you can believe those things, then you don't have to be afraid of failure anymore. Now, if your problem is a fear of discomfort, you're afraid to work because work is uncomfortable, you're afraid to uh, take a risk because taking a risk is uncomfortable, then the best thing that you can do in that situation is face it voluntarily, but do it incrementally. So if you're afraid if it's gonna be too much work, then just take the first little step and commit to that. Right? Commit to doing a little bit of work. Put yourself in a little bit of discomfort. Don't take on a lot of discomfort because that's going to be too much, right? You're going to balk at it. But if you can commit yourself to taking on a little bit of discomfort, probably you'll find that one, it wasn't that bad, and two, you'll get a sense of self-respect because you were willing to do that and maybe that sense of self-respect will feel so good that it outweighs the little bit of discomfort that you took on and that will propel you to take on a bigger chunk of discomfort. And the more you can face that discomfort, the more motivated you will be 
and the more results you will have in your life and the happier and the more pur purposeful you will feel because you're doing the Lord's work. You're doing what you were put on the earth to do. Which leads me to another point that I actually hadn't even intend to address, but this is actually something that's pretty big, and that is that you better have something worth doing if you want to be motivated to do it. Right? I mean, if your job is to dig ditches and fill them back up again, then you're probably not going to be very motivated because what you're doing has no meaning. So if you can find something meaningful, and I guarantee you there is something meaningful for you to do because that's why you were put on this earth. So and if you don't know what that is, then search for it. What, what your purpose is for the time being is to search for what you're supposed to be doing. And if you have something meaningful to pursue, then you're going to be a lot less lazy than if you have something that you have to do that you really don't want to and it brings no meaning at all to your life. And by the way, even if there's something that you have to do, if you have that meaningful pursuit, then the thing that you have to do temporarily becomes part of that meaningful pursuit. So if your dream is to be an author, let's say, but you have to work a nine to five job, um, your nine to five job is supporting you. It is, it is paying the bills. It is feeding your brain and your body that you need to write those books, right? So it's a part of that pursuit of your ultimate purpose. Another thing that's really, really helpful to recognize is that if you're facing um, a daunting task, let's say that you're this guy who's going from Mount Just Enough to Mount More Than Enough, that's a big mountain, right? And that's a deep valley. That's going to be a tough climb. Well, if you can stop focusing on the, on the depth of the valley and the height of the mountain, just take the first step. That's going to make life a lot easier. Focus on the step that you can do today. Right? You can't go down to the valley and up to the mountain today, but you can, you can make a little bit of progress. Right? As uh, I think it was Martin Luther King famously said, you don't have to see the whole staircase to take the first step. If you will break up your task into bite-sized chunks, and you don't even need to break it up into multiple chunks. All you need to do is break it up into the, the first chunk, the first little thing that you can do, and do it then that's a lot easier than seeing the whole gargantuan task in front of you and thinking, oh, I have to swallow that whole. And now, if your problem is that you're addicted to dopamine, maybe you're addicted to technology, you need constant stimulation, you have zero attention span, uh, so you can't get focused work done, well then, the best way, in my opinion, the best way to deal with that is to give your dopamine fixes a condition. So you say, uh, I'm going to check Facebook, but first I have to work for an hour. Or I'm going to play video games, but first I have to read for an hour. Right? You, you, put some, you make your, your fix, your dopamine fix, a reward for doing something that's actually meaningful. Because that's how life is supposed to work. Right? That's how we were designed. Um, is where if we do something, we do something good, uh, if we put in a lot of effort, then we get a reward for that effort in terms of a dopamine hit in our brains. But technology has, has short-circuited that so that we can do basically nothing and get those dopamine hits. So uh, the, the way to deal with that is to go back to the more natural system where you can give yourself that dopamine hit, but you have to work for it. Right? You make it a reward for a job well done, or for at least putting in some effort. And that will help with the problems with your attention span. Uh, that will help you be happier. It will help you actually break the addiction because you're not indulging quite as much. And you'll be a lot more motivated and a lot less lazy. So I hope this was helpful. If so, please do me a big favor. Hit the thumbs up because it makes YouTube algorithm like me better. Hit the subscribe button. Hit, hit the bell icon beside the subscribe button so you get all my future videos. And please share this video. I know you know people that need to hear this. So share it with as many people as would benefit from it. And also if you're interested, as a little thank you gift from me to you for hearing me out, for supporting me on YouTube, check out the link in the description to uh, my little free gift called the 8 Daily Habits for Success, Happiness, and Spiritual Fulfillment. I give that to my supporters on YouTube as kind of like a little bit of thank you.
Making these videos is a lot of work and it's kind of nerve wracking putting myself out there like that. So I really, really appreciate you guys that support me. So thank you very much for your support. And if you enjoyed this video, I think you'd also really like this video all about how people hamstring themselves because they're obsessed with being safe, that being safe keeps them from getting what they want in life. So check that out and I'll see you soon.